Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Fail! Here to wrap up a couple of projects here for the end of the year. One of the things that I never did a follow-up on was this little tiny 6BM8 amp I built. One of my first projects I did on the channel. And I've been listening to this thing for months now. And it's used in my downstairs system. It's really worked out well for what I wanted it for. And I'm going to go through some of its strengths and weaknesses. Is this a perfect amp? No, it's not a perfect amp. But it's also 5 by 9 inch chassis. And squeezing a tube amp into a chassis this small is a challenge. And still have even decent hi-fi quality. Which I think it does. Especially at lower output levels. So let's hook this thing up to the Analog Discovery 2. Run the audio analyzer suite on it. And see what this little guy puts out. So we got the little 6BM8 amp hooked up to the audio analyzer suite using the Analog Discovery 2. And I'm not real shocked seeing the frequency response versus distortion. This is both channels and you can see that both channels are very even. But we're seeing quite a bit of distortion and it really doesn't level out till 1K. And you know, then it's under 1%, but even down at a 100 hertz, we're at 2 and 3 quarters percent distortion. 40 hertz, which is right here, we've got 10% distortion. So, you know, using this little amp hooked up to speakers that have a lot of bass, probably not a good idea, but not really what it was built for. The speakers I'm using probably go down to 60 hertz, and it's still almost 5%. And this is a, this is only at a half a watt, and so it's kind of the sacrifice that was made going with these smaller output transformers. I feel, and I'm not sure that any amp would do a whole lot better with these small little 10 watt output transformers. And so let's go ahead and switch up to our THD versus power and let's do the first pull at 2k frequency since we saw that you know 2k is kind of you know it's in the meat of this leveled out part and I think we'll be measuring like what the amplifier itself is doing versus the output transformer limitation so this is at 2k it's going to stop at 10% THD, and it's been a while, but as I remember right, this amp started clipping at 2.5 watts. So let's see if that shows up on this test here. And yeah, right, right here is where you can see it just turns up. And that's two and a half watts. And down here at one watt, we've got 1.3% distortion, which I'm fine with. And even at two watts, it's got 3%. So this is a pretty clean amp up to about two watts. And that's kind of what you expect out of one of these little one tube spud amps. You know, I'm not, I'm not shocked that's kind of where its limitation is. You, know, you could push it to two and a half watts, but once you get past there, this is this part appears all into clipping, and it's really probably not very usable. So let's see. I mean, let's remember here. This is 1.3 percent at one watt at 2k hertz. Let's see what it is at 500. Yeah, see it's already got 
already got more distortion. It's four percent at two watts, and it's you know one point six percent at one watt. And just for grinnies, let's see what it does at a hundred hertz. Yeah, see, it's got a lot more distortion. And I think that's just these small output transformers. And I'm not sure there's really any way of getting around that. I don't think it's the tubes. I don't think it's the circuit. I think it's just these small 10 watt, you know, these were made as um, guitar transformers. I'm using it at pretty low wattage levels for my downstairs amp. It's mostly like for background music and it does fine. But this is one of the reasons that I think I'm going to rebuild this or possibly just build another one since the iron's the main expense and try doing it on a larger chassis with the 15 watt Edgors, but we'll go over that more in the following video. Last thing we want to look at is the frequency response and let's try it half a volt RMS and I'm expecting to see some pretty good roll off on the bottom end and then flatten out and then roll off on the top but not a lot of roll off on the top end and it's actually it's not losing a lot of frequency response down here it's just distorted and being a tube amp and having this like let's look back at this and if we look at the harmonic profile that's probably why it doesn't sound bad down there this is a nice sounding little amp and probably does sound better than the at least the specs on this THD versus frequency, but I do think that the main issue here is we really were trying for a small footprint using these, you know, really small Edcore output transformers, and they probably aren't ideal for hi fi use. So, still a good sounding amp, especially for something being this tiny with the little tiny footprint it has. Again, let's do one last pull at 1K, which is where we usually make these THD versus power tests on all the other amps. And that's nothing to cry about. One watt at 1.4% and two watts at three, was it three and a half percent? You know, even this range in here is totally usable. And obviously this first watt, nothing wrong with it. So that's it for the testing on this. Let's jump back and wrap this video up. Well, as you can see from the results, it's a pretty decent little lamp, especially for something this tiny. It literally blows the Rysong A12 out of the water as it comes out of the box. And it's a quarter of the size and a quarter or cost half the price to build it. And that's using, you know, good components. So I think it's a win. The thing that I wanna try next though is I think this is a good circuit that's being held back by these little small 10 watt ed cores. And so I've got a couple of 15 watt ed cores like I used in my 6SQ7 EL34 amp. And I want to build another one of these and, you know, make a chassis maybe about this big by, you know, probably go three or four inches in each direction on a little bigger chassis and be using the same power transformer, but put some 15 watt ed cores that are ultralinear tap and 
then compare these two. And I think that'll be a really good test too, to compare the two different size EdCore output transformers and just see what you gain for going up another size. If I was gonna build this again, I would probably do that. The 15 watt Ed cores are only $5 more each, so you're only talking about 10 bucks to go up to the higher wattage transformers. And if the 5Ks sound anything like the 3.5Ks that I used in my EL34 amp, it's gonna really make a nice difference in the way this amp sounds. And so, for again, for my uses, I'm probably using a half a watt I'm down here using it mostly for background music. It's not going to be pumping out a ton of bass on these little tiny clip speakers I'm using. And so it really works well for that. So just temper your expectations if you built this amp. And I will say that I can't remember if I used Mundorf aluminum oil caps when I first built this thing, but I put those in and then switching to that little Cree diode with the resistor that helped a bunch but I think that was in the final build videos of this was was doing that but the last tweak that I've done over time playing with the shade feedback resistor value is 220k seems to help the bass a little bit maybe it's because it's pulling the high end down that it makes the bass sound a little stronger and it's also got less distortion with that resistor. So I've got the final schematic on the website. I need to put a bomb together using those parts. But I'm almost tempted to wait until I build the second one and have the options on which one to build. So if you want a little small bedroom amp, you can build this little 5x9 version. Or if you want to build something that's going to be more for just normal listening, maybe even going to be your main amplifier, that you've got a larger version that has higher quality output transformers. So anyway, this has been a really fun project. I learned a lot working on this amplifier and tuning it. This was one of my first pulling parts from different designs that I found online and putting it together into you know my own design that was I took the best pieces of this and that and then changed some operating points and got it sounding like I wanted it to so anyway I hope if any of you have built this thing that you're enjoying it as much as I have it's a fun little two tube amp and it really serves a purpose as being an integrated amp, unlike the little spud amp that needs a preamp. And we've got plans for that one too. But anyway, hope you're enjoying my channel. If you are, please subscribe. Please like the video. And we'll see you sometime mid-later next year for more 6BM8 fun. Have a great day.